the monotonous drone of the fluorescent lights in my insurance office served as a constant counterpoint to the symphony of life that unfolded before my eyes. Each day brought a new set of faces, each etched with a story waiting to be unraveled. One such day, a man stepped through the glass doors, shattering the usual routine and sending a ripple of curiosity through my soul. Thomas Hanks, his name was, impeccably dressed in a tailored suit that spoke of wealth and sophistication. Yet, Beneath the veneer of charm flickered a hint of something else, a chilling intensity in his gaze that seemed at odds with his polite smile. Intuition, a finely honed instrument honed by years of observing human behavior, sent a sharp warning signal through my senses. As Mr. Hanks engaged in a conversation with one of the clerks, I found myself drawn to the man's every word, every gesture. He inquired about insurance policies, not for himself he claimed, but for a friend. The request itself wasn't unusual, but the way he spoke, the unsettling glint in his eyes, made my skin crawl. Days morphed into weeks in the memory of Mr. Hanks or rather the disquiet he stirred within me, refused to fade. Fate, it seemed, had other plans. An invitation to a social gathering landed in my lap, and there, amidst the murmur of polite conversation and tinkling glasses, I saw him again, Thomas Hanks. This time, the veil of indifference slipped slightly, revealing a glimpse of the man beneath. Our conversation started casually, discussing the intricacies of the insurance industry. Then, he steered the topic towards a man named Mr. Mitchum, a brilliant colleague he claimed had suffered a terrible loss. The way Mr. Hanks lingered on the word, the chill in his gaze deepening, sent a shiver down my spine. Here was a man who seemed to relish another's misfortune. As the conversation progressed, Mr. Hanks dropped another bombshell, the recent passing of his niece, a young woman named Amelia. Grief, he insisted, had left him a broken man. Yet, his polished demeanor, devoid of any genuine sorrow, made a mockery of his words. My suspicion, simmering in the back of my mind, began to bubble over. Back in the safety of my office, I delved into an investigation of my own. My initial hunch about Mr. Hanks proved true, his association with Mr. Mitchum wasn't simply professional. Digging deeper, I unearthed a shocking truth. Mr. Mitchum, under an assumed name, had been deeply in love with Mr. Hank's other niece, Eleanor. The puzzle pieces began to click into place. Amelia's sudden illness, Mr. Hank's unsolicited insurance inquiry for a friend, his fabricated story about a grieving uncle, it all pointed towards a sinister plot. Amelia's life insurance policy could be the key, the motive veiled by a mask of concern. Driven by a sense of justice and a growing concern for Eleanor's well-being, I embarked on a relentless pursuit of the truth. My days were filled with discreet inquiries, my nights spent poring over insurance records and cryptic notes. Sleep became a luxury I could ill afford, the weight of the potential tragedy gnawing at my conscience. A chance encounter in a quaint local park unveiled a vital clue. There, I met Eleanor, her usually vibrant spirit dulled by a veil of fear. 
mistaken for her shadow, a kind elderly gentleman named Major Davis. I learned of her growing suspicion towards Mr. Hanks and her constant fear for her life. The clock was ticking. Knowing Eleanor's life hung in the balance, I orchestrated a covert reunion between her and Major Davis. With a heavy heart, I watched her walk away, a flicker of hope rekindled in her eyes. Mr. Hank's fury upon discovering her disappearance only confirmed my suspicions. The noose, figurative at this point, was tightening around his neck. The final act of this chilling drama unfolded in a London flat, a dingy room far removed from Mr. Hank's world of wealth and privilege. Armed with evidence and a steely resolve, I confronted him. His meticulously crafted facade crumbled, replaced by a mask of panic as I laid bare my knowledge of his crimes. It turned out the friend needing insurance was a young man named Beckwith, who Mr. Hanks had been steadily poisoning for a hefty payout. The intricate scheme, built on lies and deceit, was unraveling at the seams. Just as Mr. Hanks attempted to downplay the accusations, the door burst open, revealing a furious yet determined Beckwith. The unexpected twist, Beckwith was none other than Mr. Mitchum, alive and well. The loss I had learned about was nothing but a meticulously orchestrated plan to expose Mr. Hank's wickedness.